Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Naval Station Norfolk and the commissioning of United States ship Gerald R. Ford. I am Captain Brent Gott, the ship's executive officer. Our ceremony will commence in just a few moments. Please turn cell phones off or place them in silent mode for the duration of our ceremony. Please note, water is available at designated areas around the hangar bay and on the pier. In the event of an emergency, we ask that you exit the ship in a calm and orderly fashion, using the brow that is closest to you. Thank you. At the conclusion of the ceremony, we will ask the guests seated in the hangar bay to remain in your seats while the President departs. For those who are interested in seeing more of the ship, we will be offering tours. There will also be a reception of light snacks hosted by USS Gerald R. Ford's Commissioning Committee at the large tents located in the parking area as you leave the pier. As you leave the ship, we ask that you follow the directions of the ushers. For those on the pier that wish to come aboard, please use the two brows that are closest to the back of the ship. USS Gerald R. Ford was bu built in Newport News, Virginia, and is the most advanced and powerful warship in the world. She is the lead ship of a new class of supercarriers that will provide forward presence and power projection around the globe to defend American interests and that of her allies in an unprecedented scale for decades to come. Her two nuclear reactors can carry her air wing anywhere around the globe for 25 years. 1,100 feet long, displacing 100,000 tons, this extraordinary ship brings six acres of sovereign American soil and 75 combat-ready aircraft to any troubled area in the world. As the next generation carrier, she brings to the fight significant new technology, improvements over the Nimitz-class carrier she replaces, including a SPY-3 phased array radar, an electromagnetic aircraft launch system, which will replace the steam catapults. President Gerald R. Ford was born on July 14, 1913, in Omaha, Nebraska, and moved as an in infant to Grand Rapids, Michigan. The future president excelled scholastically and athletically at South High School and achieved the rank of Eagle Scout, the only U.S. president to do so. He graduated from the University of Michigan, where he majored in economics and political science. He was an extremely gifted athlete and captain of the Michigan football team. He was voted the Wolverines' most viable player, and after graduation, received offers to play professional football. Instead, he chose the legal profession and graduated from Yale Law School in 1941. After the United States entered World War II, he received a commission as an ensign in 1942, eventually achieving the rank of Lieutenant Commander. He served aboard the light aircraft carrier, the USS Monterey, CVL-26, and took part in major operations in the South Pacific. Among them were battles for Truk, Saipan, Guam, Formosa, the Marianas, and the Philippines. Lieutenant Commander Ford was honorably discharged from active duty in 1946, having been awarded numerous campaign medals. After the war, he returned to Grand Rapids and resumed his law practice in a prestigious law firm. In October 1948, he married the former Betty Bloomer. For over half a century, their partnership flourished, enriched by their four children, Michael, John, Stephen, and Susan. Soon after their wedding, voters in Michigan's 5th Congressional District sent the Fords to Washington for the first of his 13 terms in the House of Representatives. The new congressman quickly established a reputation for unbending integrity and was promptly entrusted with growing responsibilities for national defense and foreign relations. In 1963, President Lyndon Johnson appointed him to serve on the Warren Commission that investigated the assassination of President John F. 
Kennedy. As President George H.W. Bush later concluded, quote, the Warren Commission report will always have the definitive say on this tragic matter. Why? Because Jerry Ford put his name on it, and Jerry Ford's word was always good, unquote. By the early 1970s, Congressman Ford and Betty decided that they would return home for good. But history and the American people weren't ready to part with Gerald Ford. In December 1973, he was appointed as Vice President of the United States. And just eight months later, on August 9, 1974, Vice President Ford assumed the presidency amidst the gravest constitutional, constitutional crisis since the Civil War. Upon taking the presidential oath, he spoke to the American people. Quote, I am acutely aware that you, not have elected, you have not elected me as your president by your ballots, so I ask that you confirm me as your president with your prayers." Unquote. Not only did the new president confront widespread public disillusionment in the wake of the Watergate scandals and the Vietnam War, he also grappled with a devastating economic recession and mounting tensions around the globe. The president, who never sought the presidency, resolved that his time in office, however long or short, would be a time of healing. He promptly announced clemency terms for Vietnam-era draft evaders and pardoned his predecessor, an act that historians now recognize as one of the most courageous in U.S. history. The presidency of Gerald Ford is defined by his resolute integrity and unflinching adherence to the truth. As Vice President Dick Cheney observed, President Ford, quote, restored trust and confidence in the presidency and the White House simply by the sheer force of his character, unquote. As President Jimmy Carter graciously acknowledged on January 20th, 1977, the gentleman from Michigan has healed the land. President Ford died on December 26, 2006, having concluded a lifetime of integrity at the helm, first instilled in him in Grand Rapids in a household more than 90 years before. Thank you for allowing each of us the privilege to serve our nation while proudly bearing the name Gerald R. Ford. Today's ceremony is a time-honored tradition that began with the commissioning of our first Navy ship in 1775. Since that time, thousands of ships have undergone the transition from Silent Hall to a fully alive warship. Our commissioning crew, hereafter known as plank owners, are in formation among you and ready.
Thank you for your patience. Ship's company, attention. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the arrival of our platform guests. Military honors to the President of the United States, our national anthem, and the invocation. We welcome and thank the United States Fleet Forces Band and the Naval Station Norfolk Saluting Battery for assisting us today. Ladies and gentlemen, our platform guests, Commander Stephen Barstow, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy, our ship's chaplain. Miss Mary Ellen Baldwin, President and CEO, Hampton Roads Navy League. Mr. Greg Willard, White House Staff Assistant to President Ford and Commissioning Committee Co-Chairman. Mr. Byron Cavani, Commissioning Committee Co-Chairman. Mr. Douglas DeVos, Commissioning Committee Co-Chairman. From Huntington Ingalls Shipbuilding, Mr. Matthew Mulherin, who most recently served as President of Newport News Shipbuilding. Rear Admiral Bruce Lindsay, United States Navy, Commander, Naval Air Forces, Atlantic. Rear Admiral Brian Antonio, United States Navy, Program Executive Officer, Aircraft Carriers. Vice Admiral Thomas Moore, United States Navy, Commander, Naval Sea Systems Command. Vice Admiral Michael Shoemaker, United States Navy, Commander, Naval Air Forces. Admiral Frank Caldwell, United States Navy, Director, Naval Nuclear Propulsion Program. Admiral Philip Davidson, United States Navy, Commander, United States Fleet Forces Command. Admiral John Richardson, United States Navy, Chief of Naval Operations. The Honorable Sean Stackley, Secretary of the Navy, Acting. The Honorable Donald Rumsfeld, former Secretary of Defense. The Honorable Scott Taylor, United States Representative, 2nd District, Commonwealth of Virginia. The Honorable Robert Scott, United States Representative, 3rd District, Commonwealth of Virginia. 
the Honorable Richard Cheney, former Vice President of the United States. The Honorable Rick Schneider, Governor, State of Michigan. The Honorable Gary Peters, United States Senator, State of Michigan. The Honorable Roger Wicker, United States Senator, State of Mississippi. The Honorable James Mattis, Secretary of Defense. The Honorable Terry McAuliffe, Governor, Commonwealth of Virginia. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our ship sponsor, Mrs. Susan Ford Bales. She is escorted today. She is escorted today by Command Master Chief Laura Nunley, United States Navy, Command Master Chief USS Gerald R. Ford. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, escorted today by Captain Richard McCormick, United States Navy, Prospective Commanding Officer, USS Gerald R. Ford. Ladies and gentlemen, honors to the President of the United States. Platform and salute.
Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem will be performed by Gerald R. Ford's own Chief Petty Officer, Berwyn Tenen. Advance the colors. Retire the colors. Platform ready. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Barstow will offer the invocation. Please pray with me. We gather together here today as one body, though we come from many different backgrounds, representing many different religions and from many different cultures, today we gather as one. We are here to celebrate together. We gather to celebrate the commissioning of this mighty ship, the USS Gerald R. Ford. We gather here to celebrate the accomplishments of the United States Navy through living out our code of honor, courage, and commitment. We gather here to celebrate the greatest nation in the world, the United States of America. And in one voice, we lift our prayers together as one body, invoking all that is within us and invoking that which is beyond us and in the realm of the spiritual and the supernatural, we invoke your presence among us and your blessing on all that we do here today. And we pray for your continued protection upon the Ford and all the Ford class carriers to follow. Bless us, Lord. Bless this crew. Bless this ship. 
And may we all be worthy and faithful to the mission for which we have been called. We pray this in your mighty name. Amen. Will the guests please be seated? Ship's Company, parade, rest. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Terry McAuliffe, Governor, Commonwealth of Virginia. Well, good afternoon, everyone. First of all, Mr. President, to the Cabinet, to our fellow guests, Governor Snyder from Michigan, Susan Ford Bales. Let me be very clear, Mr. President. I know you worry about 50 states, but let me tell you, you are here in the greatest state and the greatest nation on earth, the Commonwealth of Virginia. And we, we are great because of the 9,000 individuals who built this beautiful ship, the USS Gerald R. Ford, if we could give a round of applause for the 9,000 shipbuilders who made this possible today. <laughs> so, Mr. President, if you want to save taxpayer money and help our military, you keep investing. You put all the military contracts here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. We'll deliver on time, ahead of budget, because we are the greatest workforce in America. And I'm also proud the greatest active duty, 27 military installations, the largest naval base in the world. Let's hear it for every man and woman here who wears a cloth of this great country. And finally, to the state, the number one state in America for veterans. We have more female veterans, more veterans under the age of 25, fastest growing veteran population in America. We love our veterans here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Last year, the first state in America to be certified by the federal government to functionally end veteran homelessness, the Commonwealth of Virginia, folks. I could go on and on. We love our active duty. We love our veterans. I thank you for being here today, but what an honor. Susan, to have this ship named after your father. You think a man who, after Pearl Harbor, enlisted in the United States Navy and took over our country at a very difficult time and led our nation with dignity. We are so grateful for President Ford, and we are so grateful for the Ford family being here today. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy yourselves. If you're visiting, spend every penny in your pockets before you leave the Commonwealth of Virginia. Thank you. Go Navy! Thank you, Governor McAuliffe. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Matthew Mulherin, former president, Newport News Shipbuilding. Well, good morning, President Trump, distinguished platform guests, ladies and gentlemen, and most especially our ship sponsor, Susan Ford Bales. I always start my speeches by saying how privileged I am to be here representing the women and men of Newport News Shipbuilding. Today, these words take on even greater meaning to me personally as it's the last time I'll be saying them in an official capacity before my retirement. And so while today is a wonderful day for the Navy, I'd like to reflect for just a moment on the builders of this magnificent aircraft carrier. Being a shipbuilder isn't easy work, and it's not for everyone. Yet I am proud to say we have 20,000 of America's finest shipbuilders right across the water Newport News, proudly building the aircraft carriers and submarines that serve and protect our great nation. They come to work each day to do their best and to be their best. President Ford embodied this work ethic. He once said, the harder you work, the luckier you are, and I work like hell. 
Our shipbuilders work like hell every single day. And I'd tell you that we're also pretty lucky. We're lucky to work in an industry that allows us to be part of something greater than ourselves. We're lucky to carry on President Ford's legacy for future generations. And we're lucky to work alongside the best and brightest in the world's greatest Navy. But when it comes to building the most complex ships in the world, luck has little to do with it. It's skill, craftsmanship, and an unwavering commitment to quality that gets the job done. Building CBN 78 has been an exciting journey. From the early design concepts to our first cut of steel to our keel laying, christening, and sea trials. During those sea trials, we put her through her paces. We tested all of our systems, and yes, with all due respect, Captain McCormick, we drove her like we stole her, and she performed like a champ. I am truly honored to say I've been here for every step of her journey. And because of this, I can confidently say that this aircraft carrier represents the very best of American manufacturing, innovation, and experience. She represents the very best of the U.S. Navy and Captain McCormick and his fine crew. And she represents the strength, courage, and integrity of the 38th President of the United States. As CBN 78 joins the fleet today, she will reign over the seas just as her predecessors have done for decades. But unlike her sister ships, this ship has a secret weapon. Her name is Susan. Susan Ford Bales has redefined what being a sponsor means. Her love for the ship, her father's legacy, and our nation has been inspiring. She has provided to us a living connection to the great man, husband, president, and dad for whom this ship is named. We will always consider her our fellow shipbuilder and friend. To Susan and the entire Ford family, to Cap McCormick and his crew, and to the shipbuilders and all of our supplier businesses across the United States that made this incredible ship possible, congratulations on the commissioning of USS Gerald R. Ford. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mulherin. Admiral John Richardson, United States Navy, Chief of Naval Operations. Thank you, XO. Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome aboard 100,000 tons of Made in the USA. All right? What a day of celebration. I could go on and on, but it feels like it's starting to get a little warm in here, so I'll keep my remarks short. Certainly, the Ford family is celebrating today. What a fitting tribute to their father's legacy, President Ford, a man of humility and integrity and leadership, and embodied perhaps best in our fair sponsor, Susan Ford Bales. Ma'am, thank you so much for bringing your spirit to this ship. And so, a day of celebration for the Ford family. As Matt Mulherin so clearly and concisely said, a day of celebration for our shipbuilders here in Newport News and throughout the nation who work so hard to bring this ship together. It's definitely a day of celebration for the captain and the crew of the Gerald R. Ford, who from this day forward will now no longer be a shipbuilding project, but will be a warship and a crew. And finally, a great day of celebration for the Navy and the nation. For when Gerald R. Ford moves forward, starts cutting into the waves, she'll be protecting our interests and defending our nation for years to come. To give you a sense of what we're talking about here, the last person to command the Gerald R. Ford has not even been born yet. That's how long this ship will be around. So it's a great day of celebration for so many, but it is not a celebration for everybody. Those in the world who wish to terrorize us here in the United States and abroad, those who wish to challenge 
our shores, planning for attacks, those who may challenge our prosperity and our, our trade, those who challenge our values. This is not a day of celebration for them. This is their worst nightmare. And they will lie awake at night, fearing that they may one day come and appear on the target list of the USS Gerald R. Ford. And so, God bless the Gerald R. Ford of the United States Navy. God bless the Ford and the Navy, a comfort to our nation and her allies, and a nightmare to our enemies. Thank you very much. Thank you, Admiral Richardson. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Sean Stackley, Secretary of the Navy, acting. Susan, you have built well. And your team of shipbuilders, their tremendous workmanship is only exceeded by their tremendous patriotism. Your father would be very proud. Mr. President, one of your predecessors famously remarked, speak softly and carry a big stick. We offer you, sir, a big stick. So many distinguished guests, officers, and crew who proudly call yourselves the Gerald R. Ford. History will remember him as the man who, when the great constitutional crisis of the last century gripped our nation, would be chosen by Congress to lead our nation. And today, we remember him as the man who, when the seas were their most tempest-tossed, gave orders to the helm. Steady she goes. And in doing so, returned our ship of state safely to harbor and restored trust in our government. And as we consider this ship, his ship, which will serve our country throughout much of this next century, in our Navy, we take pride knowing that long before he became our Commander-in-Chief, before he rose through the ranks of our Congress, he served in our Navy. And his years at sea, at war in the Pacific, taught him that most fundamental truth, a truth that would serve him throughout his time at the helm of our Congress and of our country, that we are a maritime nation, that the freedoms we cherish so deeply here in America, that the blessings of these freedoms and the strength of our Navy, they are one. In his time, President Ford commissioned what was then the Navy's newest aircraft carrier, the USS Nimitz. His remarks that day ring true this day. As each of us looks upon this great ship, he said, a single thought must seize our mind, that only the United States of America can make a machine like this. There is nothing like it in the world. Wherever she shows her flag, she will be seen as we see her now, a solid symbol of United States strength United States resolve, made in America, manned by Americans. And so it is today. The USS Nimitz is underway in the Arabian Sea. And her sister ship, the George H. W. Bush, is turning into the wind in the Mediterranean while the Ronald Reagan stands watch over the Western Pacific. And yes, these ships stand as a symbol of United States strength and United States resolve. They are our nation's great instrument of security and, too, of goodwill. So, Skipper, as we marvel at the technology and the daunting numbers that measure this ship, never lose sight that in time of crisis, you will be the first to respond. And when called upon, you will deliver the final word in the bidding of our nation. Whenever you sail, wherever you sail, you will be a symbol of United States resolve and you will be a symbol of the man whose name you bear. So, steady she goes. There is truly nothing like it in the world today. Godspeed 
Gerald R. Ford. God bless her sponsor, who gives you strength, and God bless these United States, which you will defend. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Stackley. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable James Mattis, Secretary of Defense. Well, President Trump, ladies and gentlemen, today a magnificent warship joins the best Navy in the world. And it's named after a tried and true member of the greatest generation, and that spirit will permeate this ship so long as it sails on the seas, as well as the U.S. Navy spirit of we have just begun to fight. And Mr. President, you will send this ship in harm's way, and they will happily sail in harm's way for you, for our nation, and for what we stand for. Enough words have been spoken. Let me say what you've been waiting to hear. Ladies and gentlemen, our Commander-in-Chief, President Donald Trump. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary Mattis, for that wonderful introduction and for your devoted service to our nation. Nobody's done it like you. I'm thrilled to be back on this magnificent ship for this historic moment with the amazing men and women of the United States Navy. I was with you four months ago, and I knew that I had to be here today, and I told you I'd be back to congratulate you and the crew and everybody involved on commissioning the newest, largest, and most advanced aircraft carrier in the history of this world. That's a big achievement. After today, wherever the ship sails, you will all carry a proud title plank owner of the USS Gerald R. Ford. For the rest of your lives, you'll be able to tell your friends and family that you served on the greatest ship in the United States Navy, and in my opinion, on the greatest ship anywhere in the world. Everyone should take a moment to celebrate this incredible achievement. I want to thank the many public servants who have joined us here today. Treasury Secretary Mnuchin, Governor Snyder, Governor McAuliffe, Senator Wecker, and members of Congress, Secretary Stackley, Admiral Richardson, senior military leaders, and of course, the great Captain McCormick. Captain, I know you will exemplify integrity at the helm. And have a good time doing it, Captain. Proud of you. Thanks to the entire Ford family, Susan, Jack, Steve, and Mike, for all that you've done to support this ship on its voyage. Thank you, Susan. I also want to recognize two other people who were very special to President Ford. Thank you, Vice President Cheney and former Secretary of Defense Rumsfeld. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They look great. They look great. As we put this stunning ship into the service of our nation, we must also pay tribute to the thousands of citizens 
military and civilian who helped design and build her. Their love of country has been poured into every rivet and bulkhead on this vessel. You hammered, chiseled, and sculpted this mighty hull. You were there when the first steel was cut, when the turbines first roared to life, and when those beautiful bronze propellers first began to spin, and spin they did. And now you are here to witness the moment when your incredible work of art becomes the pride of the United States Navy and a symbol of American power and prestige, no matter where in the world you go. American steel and American hands have constructed a 100,000-ton message to the world. America might is second to none, and we're getting bigger and better and stronger every day of my administration. That I can tell you. Wherever this vessel cuts through the horizon, our allies will rest easy and our enemies will shake with fear because everyone will know that America is coming and America is coming strong. <laughs> to every worker from Newport News Shipbuilding, and every craftsman and engineer who helped build this incredible fortress on the sea, today we salute you. Thank you. Your skill and your grit build the instruments of war that preserve peace. This ship is the deterrent that keeps us from having to fight in the first place. But this ship also ensures that if a fight does come, it will always end the same way. We will win, win, win. We will never lose. We will win. When it comes to battle, we don't want a fair fight. We want just the opposite. We demand victory, and we will have total victory, believe me. <laughs> Having the best technology and equipment is only one part of the American military dominance. Our true strength is our people. Our greatest weapon is all of you. Our nation endures because we have citizens who love America and who are willing to fight for America. We are so very blessed with warriors who are willing to serve America in the greatest fighting force in history, the United States military. Today, this ship officially begins its role in the noble military history of our great nation. In a few moments, I will commission this wonderful, beautiful, but very, very powerful warship. Captain McCormick will assume command. He will set the first watch, and then the crew of the Gerald R. Ford will man the ship and bring her to life. A ship is only as good as the people who serve on it. And the American sailor is the best anywhere in the world. Among you are great welders, radar technicians, machine operators, and pilots. You take pride in your work, and America takes pride in you. We love you. We are proud of you. Thank you. But that is why it is so fitting that this ship is named after a sailor of tremendous character, integrity, 
and wisdom. You know that, Susan. Gerald Ford was raised in American heartland. He grew up in Grand Rapids and became an Eagle Scout. He played football at the University of Michigan on a team that won two national championships. And listen to this, on that great team, he was named MVP. Not bad. He then went to Yale Law School, and after Pearl Harbor, he volunteered to serve. President Ford joined the Navy and asked to be sent to sea. He wanted to do that very badly. He never really knew why he felt it was a calling. He was assigned to a new carrier, the Monterey, becoming a plank owner himself on its commissioning in 1943. From there, he sailed to the Pacific and saw action, and a lot of action, in the Pacific War. Like so many others of his generation, Gerald Ford returned home and started a family. He ran for Congress, where he served the people of Michigan with honor for many years. From there, he became Vice President and then President of the United States of America. With this ship, we honor him for his lifetime of selfless and distinguished service. We also remember his wife, Betty. I remember her well. And we honor the bravery she showed in living her life so that her experiences could help others. Susan, she was a great woman, a great woman. <laughs> Gerald Ford said that his time in the Navy convinced him that our lack of military preparation before World War II had only encouraged our enemies to fight harder and harder and harder. He learned a lot. In the future, Ford said, I felt the United States had to be strong. Never again could we allow our military to be anything but the absolute best. If he could see this ship today, President Gerald Ford would see his vision brought to life, and he would see his legacy of service being carried on by each and every one of you. <laughs> Gerald Ford embodied American values, like few others. Love of family, love of freedom, and most of all, love of country. He knew that patriotism is the heartbeat of a nation. He knew that we must love our country in order to protect it. And he knew that we must have pride in our history if we are going to have confidence in our future. The men and women of America's armed services are part of a living history. You uphold timeless customs and traditions and you protect our nation and our freedom for the next generation to come. You are fulfilling your duty to this nation, and now it is the job of our government to fulfill its duty to you. For years, our government has subjected the military to unpredictable funding and a devastating defense sequester. You remember that? Sequester. Not good. This has led to deferred maintenance, a lack of investment in new equipment and technology, and a shortfall in military readiness. In other words, it's been a very, very bad period of time for our military. That is why we reached a deal to secure an additional $20 billion for defense this year, and it's going up, and why I ask Congress for another $54 billion for next year. Now we need Congress to do its job and pass the budget, 
that provides for higher, stable, and predictable funding levels for our military needs that our fighting men and women deserve, and you will get. Believe me, President Trump, I will tell you, you will get it. Don't worry about it. But I don't mind getting a little hand, so call that congressman and call that senator and make sure you get it. And by the way, you can also call those senators to make sure you get health care. We must end the defense sequester once and for all. We must also reform defense acquisitions to ensure that we are getting the best equipment at the best prices so that our dollars are used only for the best interests of our country and those who serve. We do not want cost overruns. We want the best equipment, but we want it built ahead of schedule, and we want it built under budget. This is the very least we can do for the patriots who have volunteered to give their sweat, their blood, and if they must, their very lives for our great nation. The commissioning of this new American carrier marks the renewal of our commitment to a future of American greatness, greater than ever before. Remember that, greater than ever before. Just moments from now, the captain will set the first watch on the USS Gerald R. Ford. And with God's grace, a watch will stand until the day she is decommissioned 50 years or more from now. Most of you who will man this ship today are just about 20 years old. Together, you are embarking on a truly great adventure. The journey will require all of your talents, all of your efforts, and all of your heart. As you know, the sea holds many challenges and threats. But starting today, you will face, together, as a team, aboard this ship, which is your responsibility and your home. Three generations of Americans will eventually man these decks. Perhaps even some of your own children and grandchildren someday. You will inspire many more American patriots to follow your lead and to serve. And one day, when you are old and have lived a long and hopefully happy and successful life, you may find yourselves back aboard this ship, surrounded by your family, to mark its decommissioning. And on that day, our entire nation will honor not just this carrier, it will honor you and the role you will have played in keeping America safe, strong, and free. To every patriot who will serve on this ship today and throughout history, I say this. Keep the watch, protect her, defend her, and love her. Good luck and Godspeed. Thank you to the Ford family, and thank you to every sailor in the greatest Navy on Earth. God bless you. God bless the Gerald R. Ford. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you, Mr. President, and I would be honored if you would place Gerald R. Ford in commission. Will the guests please rise? Ship's company, attention! I hereby place 
United States ship Gerald R. Ford in commission. May God bless and guide this warship and all who shall sail in her. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Executive Officer, hoist the colors and the commissioning pennant. Aye, right, Captain. Ladies and gentlemen, I direct your attention to the ship's mast as we hoist the colors and commission pennant. Quartermaster, hoist the colors and the commission pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Will the guests please be seated? Captain, the colors and the commission pennant are flying over United States ship Gerald R. Ford. Very well. I will now read my orders from Commander Naval Military Personnel Command to Captain Richard McCormick, United States Navy. Subject, Bupers Order 1990 of 06 January 2016. When directed by reporting senior, detach in January 2015 from present duty and report to pre-commissioning unit Gerald R. Ford, CVN 78, as commissioning officer. Upon commissioning of USS Gerald R. Ford, report for duty as commanding officer. Admiral Richardson, United States ship Gerald R. Ford is in commission and I am in command. Executive officer, set the first watch. Aye, right, Captain. Hey. Officer of the deck, set the watch. Aye, aye, sir. The officer of the deck is the commanding officer's direct representative and, while on watch, is responsible for the safe operation of the ship and crew. The long glass is the traditional symbol of an officer of the deck's authority in the ship of the line. We are pleased to have Mr. Greg Willard with us today. Greg was the White House staff assistant to Gerald Ford while he was president and served him after he left office. Greg will pass the long glass to Lieutenant Joel Chincata of South Orange, New Jersey, the first officer of the deck. The petty officer of the watch is Quartermaster First Class Jose Triana of Miami, Florida. The messenger of the watch is Yeoman Third Class Daquan Bridges of Fayetteville, North Carolina. And the bosun mate of the watch is bosun mate Second Class Bradley Cole of Lomira, Wisconsin. Set the watch, on deck, section one. Right. Sir, the watch is set. Very well. Four. Captain, the watch is set. Very well. We are delighted today to have our sponsor, Ms. Susan Ford Bales, with us. 
Susan Chris and Gerald R. Ford, Newport News, on November 9, 2013. Susan, I would be honored if you join me up here at the podium to give the order to man our ship and bring her to life. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, in the twilight of his life, Dad learned of the decision to name CVN 78 to be the USS Gerald R. Ford. Dad felt that that was one of the highest honors he ever received, was to wear the uniform of Lieutenant Commander in the United States Navy. So upon learning the naming decision, Dad wrote a letter about CVN 78, and he concluded his letter, quote, thus is a source of indescribable pride and humility to know that an aircraft carrier bearing my name will be permanently associated with the valor and integrity of the men and women of the United States Navy, end quote. There is no one absolutely no one who would be prouder of the commissioning of this mighty ship than the President of the United States, Gerald R. Ford. Therefore, on behalf of the 38th President of the United States and as your ship sponsor, I am honored to give the command. Officers and crew of the United States, Gerald R. Ford, man our ship and bring her to life. Gentlemen, please be seated.
Ladies and gentlemen, USS Gerald R. Ford salutes you. We are proud to serve in your great Navy. Ready, two. Captain, the ship is manned and ready. Very well. Admiral Lindsay, USS Gerald R. Ford is manned and ready and reports for duty to the fleet. Very well. Welcome to the fleet. Make preparations for getting underway as soon as possible. Very well. Mr. President, request permission to break your flag. Executive officer, break the flag of the President of the United States. Aye, Captain. Quartermaster, break the flag of the President of the United States. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, the flag of the President is flying over United States ship Gerald R. Ford. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Richard McCormick, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, USS Gerald R. Ford. Ship's Company, all right, rest. Good morning, Mr. President, Secretary Mattis, Secretary Stackley, Admiral Richardson, Susan, distinguished visitors, shipmates, family, and friends. Welcome and thank you all for being here and braving the heat as we come together to celebrate this transition of this warship from a pre-commissioning unit to a capital asset. The experience of the Gerald R. Ford commissioning is best described like this. As each of us looks upon this great ship, a single thought must seize our minds. Only the United States of America can make a machine like this. There is nothing like her in the world today. We have witnessed a magic moment when an intricate mass of steel and cable, sophisticated engineers' marvels, suddenly come and become a living thing with a unique personality. These words were spoken over 42 years ago by then President Gerald R. Ford as he delivered his keynote address at the commissioning ceremony for USS Nimitz. How fitting it is then, the man who presided over the first in class commissioning ceremony is recognized today as the namesake for our great ship and the first in the Ford class. Much has been said about the first-in-class technology aboard Ford, technology that, like Nimitz in 1975, exists nowhere else. The Ford incorporates flexibility into the carrier platform to accommodate future systems and technologies to ensure that the Navy is ready to conduct prompt and sustained combat incident to operations at sea for decades to come. And yet, as groundbreaking as this technology is, it will never supersede the quality of the sailor who operates it. And the sailors aboard today are among our nation's finest. They are talented, driven, innovative, dedicated, passionate about what they do, and I am very proud to be their captain. James D. Horn Fisher, author of the book The Last Stand of the Tin Can Sailors, said it best. A fighting force cannot be reduced to its order of battle any more than a ship's value can be reduced 
to the number of guns she carries or the shaft horsepower her turbines can generate. A vessel draws life from the spirit of her crew, which derives in large part from the leadership qualities of her chiefs and officers. Morale defies quantification, and yet it weighs significantly on the ultimate lethality of the tools of war. We cannot succeed absent the strength and skills of our sailors and the dedication and commitment they bring to the fight. Our sailors will ensure that Gerald R. Ford remains mission ready and prepared to execute national tasking for decades to come. I want to thank legislators, shipbuilders, and sailors for all your efforts in taking USS Gerald R. Ford from concept to delivery. And last, but certainly not least, I would like to express my gratitude to the families of our servicemen and women who supported their loved ones as we worked hard to prepare this ship for sea. Your devotion and sacrifice cannot be understated, and I want to thank you personally for all your support. Team Wolverine, I have the utmost faith and confidence in your abilities to handle any challenge ahead. And I can think of no better team to take USS Gerald R. Ford to sea. God bless you, your families, and our Navy. Thank you. Ship's company, attention. Will the guests please rise? Chaplain Barstow will now lead us in the benediction. Let us pray. As we prepare to end this celebration, we pause to ask for a going away blessing, a send off, a plea for continued blessings and protection and success. So we ask, may our efforts to reach this point and beyond continue to be rewarded. May we experience protection and safety for this crew and all the sailors who will follow us. Go with us, be with us, strengthen us, encourage us, guide us. And may we be granted wisdom for the journey, and may integrity be the compass that we follow. We pray for the leaders of this ship, for the leaders that will follow, and for the leaders of our Navy and our nation, which this ship serves. Bless us. Go with us. Be with us. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Barstow. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Please remain seated until the President and the official party have departed the ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to our post-commissioning reception, hosted by USS Gerald R. Ford's Commissioning Committee at the large tents located in the parking area as you leave the pier. For those interested in a closer look at your great ship, several tour routes have been established. Tours will commence in approximately 20 minutes and conclude at 2 p.m. For your safety, please remain on the marked tour route 
where our guides are stationed to assist you and answer your questions. For those guests with blue and white tickets, you will turn to the left as you depart the pier. For those guests who have red, purple, purple or gold tickets, you will turn to the right as you leave the pier and proceed to your parking area or buses as appropriate. Buses will be marked with their respective destinations. For red ticket holders, the red buses will return those guests to Vista Point and the buses will run until 3 p.m. This concludes our ceremony. It was truly an honor and a privilege to have you join us. Ship's Company, dismissed. <laughs>